So, hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free GCSE and A Level Maths videos all for free, uh, amazingly ordered for the website, amazingly shortened as well. Yeah, anyway, uh, this video is about partial fractions from the C4 module at Excel A Level Maths. And what is it about, really? It's about breaking big fractions into tiny little ones like that and the rough idea is that for every uh, what is it called factor on the bottom each of these bracket things um, I create an extra fraction so this is a factor x plus 5 which makes this fraction which has got denominator x plus 5 this one actually creates two fractions because it's got a squared uh, and how it works is you create one linear one x minus 2 and one squared one like this is x minus 2 squared and that's that really um, if I didn't have this squared thing um, it would be a bit more like this one where I've got two factors so simply two fractions made out of it. Ignore the 2 there, which is just that 2 there. Right, now once you got this idea that this is equal to this stuff, well, if I try to compare it, well, to compare it, I have to bring it back together, so bringing it back together is really basic, you should be able to do this quite easily. Uh, A, I have to times top and bottom by x minus 2 and x plus 5 to make the denominator like this, yep. Yeah. Um, after top and after times top and bottom over here by x plus five, because I've already got x minus t squared as this one has, I just need the x plus five now. And times top and bottom over here by x minus t squared. Okay. Um, and then bring it all together and I'll have this basically. Yeah, so I times top and bottom over here by x minus 2 and x plus 5, which I've got there. That one I times top and bottom by x plus 5, which I've got there. And I times top and bottom over here by x minus t squared. And of course, when I bring it together, you get a common denominator x minus t squared x plus 5. Now it's comparable. This is comparable to this. I can see that uh, this top bit must equal this top bit there, as I've written here. And how do I work out A, B, and C from that? Uh, there are two basic methods. Either substitute values of x, which makes certain bits disappear, and the whole thing re makes it the whole thing really simple, or I can compare coefficients. So let's start with the substituting trick. I'm going to use x equals two, uh, which means I have to put x equals two wherever I see the x. And why did I choose x equals 2? Because I knew I've got an x minus 2 which will make this disappear and it will make all of this disappear because that becomes 0 makes the whole thing 0 that becomes 0 makes the whole thing 0 so really I end up with 2 plus 5 which is 7 because x is equal to 2, that's what we're doing 7b uh, is equal to, if I multiply that out it becomes 21 okay so uh, what was I saying? Yep. So 21 equals 7b, therefore b must be 3, so I've got one letter so far. And I can do a similar trick again, substitute x equals minus 5 this time. So I put minus 5 here, there, everywhere. What do I get? Well, wherever I've got an x plus 5, that's going to disappear, right? So that's all going to disappear, that's all going to disappear. And I've got x, which is minus 5, minus 5 minus 2, which is minus 7, squared is 49. So 49c is is equal to 196 because I put minus 5 in all those two places and I got 196. So 196 equals 49C, therefore C equals 4. Two letters done. Now let's just uh, show you how the comparing coefficient stuff works. You should know what comparing coefficients means really already because you would have done it in C2 for example when you were doing things like, um, what was it? Uh, suddenly got out of my mind. Oh yeah, expanding brackets. Yeah, binomial expansions. You would have compared coefficients quite a lot there. So you should know roughly the idea is that you comparing coefficients means looking at in the number in front of in this case x squared. I said I could have said comparing coefficients for x, which is where uh, wherever you get x look at the number in front, that should be the number in front over there. So how many x squares do I have 
here, I can really look at here, and how many x squares do I have here? On this side it's really obvious, I've got 6x squared. If I uh, look how many x squared I've got here, well, this bit's not going to make any x squared, but this is, this is going to produce x squared plus blah 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 blah, so I'm going to have c times x squared, and if I multiply this out, I'm going to get x squared plus blah 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 blah, so basically I'm going to have a times x squared, and c times x squared added together is equal to 6x squared. So, in short, 6 is equal to a plus c, because 6x squared equals a squared plus c squared, so that means a plus c or squared uh, is equal to 6x squared, so therefore a plus c is equal to 6. Anyway, so if a plus c equals 6, but we already know c equals 4, that means a equals 2. Simple as that. So therefore I've worked out all the letters a, b and c, a equals 2, b equals 3, c equals 4, so 2, 3, 4, as we had before, so 2 over x minus 2, 3 over x minus 2 squared, and 4 over x plus 5. So that's one example done. Obviously when you do something for the first time it always seems really long and we don't really bother with this. With a bit of practice you realise all I have to do is since I have to times top and bottom by x minus 2 and x plus 5, I'm just going to write a x minus 2 x plus 5, b x plus 5 and c x minus 2 squared is equal to this stuff on the top. Don't really have to bother bringing it all together. With some experience you would be doing that. Right, so that's the answer to that. That is your original fraction broken up into those partial fractions, those mini, the smaller fractions. Uh, what happens if you've got an equal or larger numerator than the denominator, i.e. basically a top-heavy fraction? What do you do? Well, you just divide it. You multiply this together, which gives you, uh, what does it give you? x squared minus 2x minus 3, and that's the original thing on the top, so I'll put that there, and I do a divide, bit of uh, long division, and what do I get? I get 2 remainder x minus 3x minus 1. So I get 2 remainder 3x minus 1. Now that remainder means over the divisor, yeah? The, so basically it becomes 2 plus that over this, which kind of makes sense, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, just if you're not sure about that, let me give you an example. If I said 10 over 3 as a fraction, which is the same as 10 divided by 3, that would be 3 and 1 remainder, or 3 and 1 third. So just imagine that in your head, okay? And that will make sense of all of that. So anyway, this becomes this, and this can be broken up into this stuff here. Sorry, this bit here can be broken up into this bit there. And that's as simple as it is.